Here we go. Car football has begun. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 ridiculous Top Gear challenges. Really, yeah, I'm properly proud of that. Yes. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the weekly tasks and tests that the Top Gear presenters went through in order to give a full description of what their vehicles are capable of. Though you could be forgiven for asking just how some of these challenges help to determine a car's strengths or weaknesses, it's probably better to just go along with it. And on that bombshell, sound off in the comments. Number 10. The Indestructible Hilux Compared to many other vehicle reviews, the rigorous testing that the Toyota Hilux was put through over two episodes of Top Gear would seem somewhat extreme. That was phenomenal. I know, amazing. I but that doesn't account for two things. One, compared to the other challenges on this list, this one is a little restrained. And two, Toyota brought this on themselves when they claimed the pickup truck was indestructible. This didn't really hurt it either. To prove otherwise, Jeremy tried crashing the Hilux into a tree into the Bristol Channel, dropped a caravan on it, and set it ablaze. When the truck survived, James May added it to a tower block destined for demolition. Toyota won this challenge as their Hilux can still start. It now rests upon a plinth in the studio. Number 9. Playing Trains and Automobiles Just what this particular challenge was testing out left us scratching our heads. Look at this! It's a train and it works! It didn't leave us any less entertained though, as the hosts were tasked to build a cheaper train out of existing vehicles in order to combat the rising rail fares, as train manufacturing is expensive. With each presenter taking responsibility for turning a caravan into a train car, the Jaguar XJS that was pulling them struggled with the overall weight. May and Richard Hammond replaced it with a 4x4, whereas Clarkson modified the Jag to become a sports train. The sports train is invincible! The two teams raced from near Leicester to near Loughborough, which Clarkson's newly christened TGV12 won after the original's buffet car caught fire before the scum car was obliterated. The fact is... <laughs> Number 8. The DIY Police Cars Flamboyant and fast. Only one person can win this. After watching footage of the UK's police cars slowly crashing into a garden, the producers of Top Gear decided it was time to do something about the somewhat lackluster patrol vehicles. Instead of using the Vauxhall Astras that the old Bill use, the hosts had to buy second-hand cars and put them through some rigorous testing. How can I do flamboyant driving in this? I need points! Oh, no, he's broken the thing off. Look, he's broken his tongue. I've deployed my stinger there. Firstly, the cars had to race with their blue lights flashing and outrace the Stig in a standard cop car. Secondly, they had to clear and secure a crime scene. We were working well as a team. I'm towing that car! <laughs> Lastly, the three cars had to chase down and stop the Stig in a stolen BMW. A wayward tire from Clarkson's Fiat nearly killed a cameraman, and the winner was undetermined. Number 7. Antagonising the Locals We just sort of decorated our cars in a distinctive manner. NASCAR sucks, country and western is rubbish. Guess what, you're in a hick town, man. Top Gear, during what is now known as the Clarkson era, often found itself on the wrong side of controversy. Rarely would a series pass without offense being caused to some individual or demographic. So it seems somewhat begging for trouble when the trio of Clarkson, Hammond and May were sent to the United States and, in particular, the very conservative Deep South. Rocks started pelting our vans. Already on course for trouble, they are then tasked to get one of the other shot or arrested, to which each presenter took great care in writing slogans designed to antagonize the native Alabamians. The crew were chased out of the state by irate locals, though if they'd stayed any longer, then the task would have been a success. Doing something I never thought I'd do. I am running for the border. God in heaven, that was actually frightening. They could have killed us. 
Gears. Number 6. Making Waves just like any classic Top Gear challenge, we're going to bend the rules with this entry and give you two challenges for the price of one. How brilliant is that? The task for the presenters was to design and build an amphibious car out of an existing road vehicle. What this meant was that each had to present a car that was capable of floating and traveling over water. The first challenge, which was won by James May, demanded that the car boats traveled over a reservoir. It works! That is really annoying. The Redux version didn't go quite so swimmingly, as producers upped the ante by asking the vehicles to travel over the English Channel. This is absolutely brilliant! Three car boats left the British Isles, only Clarkson's Toy Boater arrived in France. The pickup. And landed. Number 5. A Stretch of the Imagination It wasn't long ago when limousines were all the rage. The image of A-listers arriving at the red carpet in a stretch limo was the zeitgeist of Hollywood glamour, particularly in the late 80s to early noughties. I must be honest, oh, wait, no, is... the panda wasn't much good. These days, modern Britain's relationship with the glitzy car is reserved for secondary school proms and the occasional Hindu. Still, that didn't stop Top Gear from attempting to revive the limousine industry, albeit with a twist. My limo had become bogged down, but the film crew kindly pushed me out and I was on my way again. Instead of simply driving one, the boys had to build their own out of normal cars. Clarkson's was so ridiculously long that he had to shave it down so that it was roadworthy. Still, he was at least worthy of something as the results were less than stellar. Jeremy, how you doing? Uh, not well. Number 4. The Camping Holiday The relationship between Top Gear and the camping industry has been tumultuous at best. Oh no. I've got a warning light. Guys, I've got a warning light on the dashboard. It says stop. In the early days, the bog standard caravan was used to both measure a vehicle's destructive power or to destroy one, such as the aforementioned Toyota Hilux. So it was with great expectations that the team were to exhibit their excursion vehicles when they had to build, you guessed it, a caravan. Taking a completely fresh approach to the motorhome designs, Hammond's was constructed of panels that would detach and make a house. In Hammond's head, his build was coming along nicely. But it wasn't. No. May's was tiny but effective, whereas Clarkson's was a towering monstrosity. Still, could be worse. Fire and sabotage via a cliff destroyed Hammond's and Clarkson's respectively, but May's was hardly considered a winner. Number 3. Anne Hathaway's Cottage We've had Pimp My Ride, but thanks to the Top Gear team, we now have Quaint My Ride. I'm executing something silly here. It's not silly. Not happy with the standard wares of his Mercedes-Benz S280, Jeremy employed the use of professional designers to spruce up the car's interior, and then promptly ignored them in favor of his own designs. This is a joke, that's not design. Clarkson's imagination certainly ran away from him, and the reality fell short of the plans, especially as he had weighted it down by installing concrete flooring and a working stove. Now there's a little bookcase with a globe on the top. Here's my wing back. I found one that fitted. Uh, and of course, all the furniture is fully adjustable. Opting not to test drive it was his best decision, since May and Hammond had no fun testing the Anne Hathaway's cottage design. A lack of seat belts and too much inertia led to the hosts being flung about like a snapped elastic band. Do you know what? What? This is rubbish. <laughs> Terrible. Number 2. Car Football 1 and 2 Nope, it's not Rocket League. It's bona fide, true to life football, except cars are taking the place of the players. Across to number two. He's found the gap. Yeah! <laughs> in what is certain to be a visual for the ages, James May and Richard Hammond engage in a little soccer rivalry and faced off against each other on the pitch. I'd lost the ball. Damn! But number six came out of nowhere. Again, we've included two entries here in one, since the results of the first game led to another grudge match between the presenters. Goal hanging ref. He's just sitting in the go and oh, no, score it. There it is. Oh. Of course, they were surrounded by professionals, and it's really hard to understand what aspects of the motor vehicles this challenge was reviewing. 
But of course, no one cares except for a very sporting James May. Here I go. I've got to hit him. Oh, Jeremy, where is it? It's going to go. Oh, you don't yeah. <laughs> Number one, the Starship Reliant Robin. The Reliant Robin holds a very special place in the hearts of the Brits. Here we go. Reliant Robin. Oh, no. Oh no, I've crashed it. Its unique three-wheel design, while somewhat impractical on tight corners, has stamped into pop culture history as a hallmark moment of the British sense of humor. After all, a car like this couldn't possibly be anything more than the payoff of an elaborate sitcom joke, could it? And stop. That is the business end of a reusable, reliant, Orbiter. Apparently so, as James May and Richard Hammond converted one into a rocket years before Elon Musk sent a Tesla to outer space. Sadly, despite help from the UK Rocket Association, a problem during separation meant the Reliant came crashing down to Earth. Still, that was the closest a Brit came to exploring space in a long time. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.